talk about how to pray when you're stuck. The, re the truth is this. Huh. When you become overwhelmed, your problems don't go away. They only get amplified. When you get to the place in your life where you become overwhelmed, your problems never go away. They just amplify. Let's read the story of, um, of this story, the, this psalm, Psalm 142, verse, 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 um, verse 3. Oh, this is powerful. The Bible says, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path in the way wherein I walked. Thou privately, they privately laid a snare for me. I looked on my right, on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. My refuge, the people I could put my trust in, failed me. No man cared for my soul. So when you're in the state of being, you know, when you're overwhelmed, it's just quite a challenging place to be in. You look to the right, there's nobody there. You look to the left, there's nobody there. And you can see, the reason why I'm saying about being overwhelmed is this. When you stay in an overwhelmed state for a long time, you will start doubting the power of prayer. When you stay in a battle for a long time, you will start doubting what your God can do because you're like, if my God can do it, why has he not done it? Right. And let me say something to you. Let me look up here. There's nothing that destroys a prayer life that are unsaid prayers. There's nothing that destroys a prayer life than unanswered prayers. Because you have history of unanswered prayers. Because you're a rational human being, you just woke up one day, this does not work. Yeah. That I've been praying for so long, if this thing works, then I should not be here. And you now find people that are not praying and have what you are praying for. Oh, talk to me, somebody. Are you in church this morning? Glory to God. And your heart is com completely overwhelmed. You know what it feels like when, when you were, you know, when you were a single girl, you, you had a dream that I'm going to marry a nice Christian guy, and when we get married, it's going to be so sweet and so romantic. I'll be in bed, and the guy's going to bring like, you know, sausages and bacon and coffee in bed. And now you're married, and seven years into your marriage, your husband has stopped saying I love you, and there's another lady in your marriage that is an item, and you're wondering where did I go wrong? Do you, know what it, do you know what it feels like when, when it seems as if you are praying and things are getting worse? It seems as if the more you intensify the prayer, the more things get worse. It almost seems as if the things you don't pray about happens far better. Come on, you need to encourage me this one. That's a good place to say amen. amen. So it's almost as if, what, then why am I praying? Your heart is overwhelmed. See, the, the reason why I want to start from here is this. If I don't deal with the issue of the overwhelmed heart, your prayer life will always be affected. Let me show you something. Where's my ball? If I, I can get you to pray. Where's the phone? Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm fine. Watch this. This is a bowl of water. Can you say it? You can say it, right? It's a, when it's a bowl of water, I can say it. <laughs> That's what you can say. I want to put the phone inside the water. It's not big enough. I thought they would get a bigger bowl. Well, the phone is now soaked in water. You can hold it. See? When your heart is overwhelmed, that's when you fall into water. If you don't deal with your heart, even when you come out of it, the effect of the overwhelmed heart stays with you forever. How many of you have your phone fallen in some water? You picked out your phone. When you picked out your phone, the phone is no longer in water. <laughs> but it's behaving as if it's inside water. <laughs> because all of a sudden, the phone is not working again. Is it yes or no? Yes. Because, and that's why some of you, some of you, Hold on. Thank you. Some of you, you find out that why don't I believe in prayer? Why don't I believe in fasting? Thank you, sir. Why don't I believe in prayer? Why don't I believe in fasting? Why am I not so enthusiastic about spiritual things? And there is nothing you can point to, but if you can think back seven years ago, there was a time you were going through a tough time and you did everything you knew how to do. Concerning prayer and fasting, and things did not work out that way. 
Although you came out of the situation, but a mindset came out of it with you that says prayer and fasting cannot be trusted. Is that not true? It just comes with you. That, oh, you, you, can, like, you can trust it. And, and that's why you must deal with an overwhelmed heart. Because if you don't have an overwhelmed heart, this is what will happen to you. You will find yourself praying without real expectation that God will respond to your prayers. And the problem is this. When you have a mindset that God does not answer my prayer, you will not see your prayer answered. Someone says, is that possible? Because you're, when, you don't have, when you have a mindset that God does not answer your prayers, you will not see your prayer answered because when your prayer answer shows up, you will never be aware it showed up. Someone says, show me the Bible. Did you notice that when Peter came out of prison, they were praying for his deliverance. Peter came to the door. Peter knocked on the door. The people that were praying, a girl told them, the person who are praying for is at the door. They say you are mad. You know why? Because they had got into that state where prayer was an activity, not something that breaks result again. What about Zachariah? The angel that appeared to Zachariah, I said, Zachariah, the Lord has heard your prayers. I've come in response to your prayer. Zachariah said, how can you come in response to my prayer? I mean, this was when I was praying. And some of you, the reason why you're unable to see answers to your prayer is this. This is the reason why. Because your heart, your mindset says, I mean, God is not going to do what it is. I mean, you, your mindset is not just there. And that's why you have to fix that mindset. You have to come back to a place that says, Lord, I believe you answer prayers. See, when I say you believe, everybody believes here. Yeah. Do you believe here? So I say, what do you mean? If you believe God answers your prayers, why don't you act as if your prayers are answered? Boom. That's a check. Why don't you act as if your prayers... There's a man that... I'm not even sure that... Um, there's a great man of prayer. And um, he was going to... He was passing one day and he saw a child crying. He sees the child all the time. He said, why are you crying? He said, my ball is lost and I want another ball and my dad won't buy it for me. And the man said, well, can I pray with you that God will provide you a ball? So he closed his eye as he was going to pray. He said, what, what, what color ball do you want? And the boy described the color. He said, let's pray. He prayed in Jesus' name. And the next time the guy came, you know the question the, guy, the man asked him? He said, was it the color we prayed about? What does that show? The man did not say, have you seen the ball? He said, the ball will come. Was it the color we prayed about? That is expressing confidence. So most of us pray, but we don't have confidence in our prayer. And the Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy in time of need. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, let's, let, let, let's get going. So Psalm 140, where are we? 142. Verse 3, um, 143 now. Oh. 143 verse 4. Therefore is, the, therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me, and my heart within me is desolate. So the question is this. Hey, what do I do? So this is a question. This is, this is a teaching now. That when I'm going through a very tough time in my marriage, when I'm going through a tough time in my job, when I'm going through a tough time that I don't know what to do, exactly how am I able to pray in such a way that I'm able to turn loose the power of God to bring about change in what I want to do? So let's look at the story in the Bible, 2nd Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 in verse 1. Someone say prayer is powerful. Uh, uh, two people just said that. Prayer is powerful. 2nd Chronicles 20, verse 1. The Bible says, and it came to pass that the children of Moab and the children of Amnon, with the other besides the Ammonite, came against Jehoshaphat to war. Then came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea of the side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon, Tamar, which is in Egadim. And Jehoshaphat feared and set him. See, see, like, and Jehoshaphat did what? And Jehoshaphat did what? Let me, let me give you this. When you have challenges, and, and this is what I'm going to, the first thing that happens is this. Your emotions overtake you. 
You know what it means when you just get to the office and you just get a letter. Thank you for your service to this bank. We no longer require your service. When you get that kind of letter in your mind, you will just see poverty. Like you just see poverty. Because that's what fear does. What does fear? Fear produces imagination. The Bible says, as Jehoshaphat saw people, he became afraid. But when you have, when, see, don't pray when you're afraid. You know why? Great prayer does not come out of fear. Great prayer comes out of faith. Great prayer doesn't come out of doubting and out of anxiety. Great prayer comes from the place of assurance and confidence. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, this is the confidence that we have in him, that whatsoever we ask according to his will, prayer is predicated on confidence in God. So when you pray out of fear, your prayer will not be effective. When you pray out of anxiety, your prayer is not effective. So what do we do? So when you get to a place in your life where you are anxious, where you are afraid, where you are just overwhelmed by what's going around you, the first thing you do is not to pray. You must control your emotions. You must control your emotions. Because your emotions are powerful. God loves your emotion, but God does not respond to emotional prayers. The Bible does not say the prayer of emotions will save the sick. He said the prayer of faith saves the sick. It's the prayer of faith, not the prayer of anxiety. It's the prayer of faith that saves the sick. The prayer that changes something is not the prayer that is full of emotions. It's the prayer that is full of faith. So that guy comes home and looks at you and say, hey, we've did it for five years, but I can't do this again. And when he says that, your emotions want to take over and you want to curse him in the name of God. Instead of you to pray at that point, some of you even say, God, are you allowed him? God, when he's talking, why need you just strike him dead? So just if you, if you don't want to strike him dead, just at least give him a dirty staff so that he will know he's saying the wrong thing. Those are emotional prayers. See, the reason why a lot of people do not get results in their prayers is this. They are, praying, they are praying through their emotions. We can use our emotions to pray, but our emotions cannot be the basis for our prayer because emotions oscillate from time to time. Joseph said, when they referred to me, he said, I feared. Then when he said, I feared, what's the next verse? <laughs> he said, I set myself to what? You got to the place where they had promised you that you get a contract for 45 million. As you got there, the guy that was helping you, they've been transferred. Contract canceled. <sighs> you now imagine how much you have invested to get the contract. You've already borrowed money. You just say, ah, they me by me, ah. You put it on the head. See what the Bible says. Jehoshaphat feared. He didn't pray next to The Bible says he set himself. Question. How do you set yourself to seek the Lord? I thought you just, you just seek the Lord. You know what you set yourself? It's like a watch. You take a watch and you set the watch. You know how you set yourself? The first thing is this. Have a look over here. If you're going through a very tough time, the way you set yourself to seek the Lord is this. Control your emotions. Control your emotions. Don't let your emotions get a hold of you. Then the second thing is this. Remember. What do you remember? Remember that you have gone through wars and God gave you a testimony. Why is it important to remember? Every time you are going through a tough situation, if you can just remember that I've gone through wars and God gave me a testimony, it will open up something in your mind that what I'm going through here right now, God can give me also a testimony. That was why when David saw Goliath, you know what David said? He said, he said, the Lord, you know, Saul was still saying, will you use my armor? Will you use this? He said, relax. He said, the Lord that delivered me out of the snare of the, of, of the lion, that delivered me from the, from the deer, he said, will also give me this uncircumcised Philistine. What was he saying? He says, if God has done it before, he will do it again. Let me tell you something. There are many of you, even the job you have is a miracle right now. Is that not true? If you, if you know your job is a miracle, you will understand that nobody can sack you. The second thing you have to do, is, well, you remember, is to know the second thing. And this is the first type of prayer you pray. Don't say, God, do something. Cast your case on Jesus. What's casting your case on Jesus? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. 
First Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Let's shoot together. I want to go. What? I'm saying that when you're overwhelmed and troubled, how do you pray? Stanley, come. I want to show you something. Stanley, take my jacket. So, so take, I want to, I want to, don't play. Watch this now. Did you notice how Stanley had my jacket? You know why I can't give someone my, someone my jacket? If I give someone like Grace Mark in the choir my jacket, let me tell her how Grace will hold it. She will say, Pastor, this is your jacket. He said, is it, what's wrong? He said, you should actually hold it. I'm holding the jacket for you. She won't fold it for me very well. You know, girls are used to folding things. She will fold it. She said, I folded it very well. I folded it. Is she wrong by folding it? But as a, as a man, you don't fold a jacket like this. What do you do? You hold a jacket like this. So when, when the Bible says, cast your, all your cares upon him, he was saying that, give me your trouble because I can take care of it well. Are, are you hearing me? He, he says, cast all your cares. He says, the reason why you can cast your care on Jesus He's because Jesus can take care of it well. But that's not the only reason. Listen to me. There are two things about Jesus you need to know. Number one, he can solve your cares. Then number two, he not only can solve your cares. Because listen, I'm not only interested to know you can do it. I need to know you can do it, but you will do it for me. A lot of people can take care of children. But the person I would leave my children to is the person that loves me enough to take care of my children like myself. So when he says, cast your cares on me, he says that not only can I solve your cares, but I will take care of your cares just the same way you would take care of your cares. I always say to myself, I said, I always say to myself all the time, I said, Jesus wants me to succeed more than I want to succeed. It's my way of casting my cares on him. If you lost your job, instead of you panicking, just say, Jesus, I cast my cares on you because I'm just putting it on you because I I know you take care of it. You know why? Once you don't do this, you always worry. Once you don't do this, you always worry. Cast your cares on oh, Jesus. That guy broke up with you. You're, you're, someone say, "Hey, you, if I were you, I would swear for you with my pants." <laughs> see, there are things you see that I'm like, "Are you a born again Christian, or you?" You visit some places in addition to your Christianity. See, because the question is this. Why are you paying? Let me tell you something. The only reason why you are paying this is he's left to you. That's the reason why you are paying. And you're wondering what the future holds. If as it broke up with you, Bill Gates, for example, had a son that asked you out the same day, you will not even bother to think about him again. Watch this now. So the guy breaks up with you. I just go, Lord, it's painful that John has broken up with me. But I cast my care of the future, my pain on you. Because I know you care for me. You lost a job? As you lost a job, you see all the pictures of how will I pay school fees? How will I pay house rent? You go to God in prayer. And this is before you pray. Because the point is that once you lose that job, your heart is overwhelmed. Your heart is full of anxiety. And listen, you can't pray from a place of anxiety. Death comes through anxiety. Life comes through faith. So you can't pray from a place of anxiety. You have to pray and declare from a place of faith. So what do you do? Lord, I don't know why the job was gone. I don't know why I lost the job but I cast my cares on you because I know you care for me. And let me tell you something. Uh, what I want to say is in Yoruba because my mother that tells me, my mother prays that prayer in Yoruba, but I don't know how to say it in English. My mother prays this way. My mother has this eulogy for God. He says, 
the breakable plates we give to you does not get broken. Huh? But that prayer can only be expressed in your life. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, enjoy that prayer. <laughs> it, it says, the break, it, it, say, it say, God, you are the person that when we give you a brick plate, it doesn't get broken. <laughs> when we give you a plastic basin, it doesn't get torn. <sighs> Meaning that you are the perfect custodian. He said, even we, when we keep our own, we can break it. The way they will forgive me, all of you that know you right, just forgive me for now. The way your boss says this. Say it again. Hmm? What? Hey! This guy needs microphone. Come, 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 come. He needs microphone. Igba taba fili elo woki fo. Awo taba fili elo woki fire. He says, you are the perfect. Let me tell you something. You know why you're unable to cast your cares? You know why you're unable to cast your cares? The reason why you're unable to cast your cares is this. You think you can do a better job than God. That's all. Why are you not able to cast your cares? Is either you don't know you should cast your cares? Or because in your heart, you just really think you can do a better job than God. You think you can carry all your cares by yourself than God. No wonder your life is going up and down because you are carrying too much. You are carrying too much. And no wonder he said to you, he said, come to me. All ye that heavy laden, I will give you rest. Brother, you are carrying too much. Sister, you are carrying too much. There's help for you at the throne of grace. There's help for you at the throne of grace. Don't carry so much again. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to save my marriage. I'm trying to save my marriage. I'm trying to save my... You're carrying too much. Ha, so, it's my child. My child must do what? My child... You're carrying too much. I'm going to say that. Don't you understand? I'm the one you give a breakable plate to. I does not get broken. Even if the plate was broken before, I can make new plates. Let's finish with this. This is what happens when you pray. When you pray, you are able to take your... Give me my jacket. I, left, I forgot my jacket. When you pray... Come back, Stanley. When you pray, this jacket is worrying me. I'm able to take what worries me. And not just dump it on someone. Dump it on someone that can fix... And someone that cares. Thank you. The most painful thing about prayer to God is this. Most of us don't pray about what really matters to us. Most of us do not know what it means to be vulnerable in the place of prayer. We come into the place of prayer and we're like Adam when he has fallen with leaves. We are covering the kindness. God knows you're a drunkard. He knows. <laughs> God said, God, I don't want to just fix everything. What's fix everything? Because you, you don't want to come to, does he not know? God knows that you're a liar. He knows. God knows that you have no shishi. You know, he knows. Just say, Lord, look at me. I don't have a dime. Can we just name vulnerability in the place of prayer? And let me say something to you. If it makes you worry, it's a prayer point. Whatever can take space in your mind and makes you worry is an indicator of something you should be talking to God about. Your child makes you worry, pray about it. Your boss makes you worry, pray about it. Your results makes you worry, pray about it. Your boyfriend gives you heart attack. The problem is not checking his phone, pray about it. If you will, some say, I don't know what to pray about. If you convert worry into prayer, you will have less stress and more results in your life. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Huh. So, so let, let, 
I need to show you one more place. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7. So it says, cast your cares on what? Because what? Yes. Next verse. Amen. Next verse. See, see. So remember that it says, cast your cares. See. Will you receive this? Yes. A- amen at the back. Amen, amen at the back. Amen. It says, cast your cares on him because it's powerful. Why? He said, the reason why I cast my cares on Jesus is not because he's God. Because he has my self-interest at heart. Oh my God. The, the reason why I can take my problem to Jesus is not because he's strong. It's because he will put me before him. He said, cast your cares on him. Not because he's powerful. But because he cares. So the reason why I can, so the reason why I don't find myself Casting my cares because I don't trust that he cares. Then the next verse says something. You, you know, in the Bible, it's arranged according to context. Next verse blows it out. It said, For all of you that don't cast your cares, this is what will happen to you. Next verse. It says, Be sober, be vigilant. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, as a royal lawyer, is seeking who may devour. Why is that the next verse? Because every time you carry care and worry, you are opening the door for Satan to come inside. That what he's saying. Every time you're carrying a care, and Mark chapter 4 says it this way. He says, the one that the seed grows and the, the tears choke is the one that the seed grows and the cares of this life begins to what? Choke the world. So many of you, you find that, why is my prayer life dying? Because there's a care you're carrying. There's a burden you're carrying. You're meant to release. And let me tell you something. Sometimes, just release it. Just release it. So Jehoshaphat went. Uh, Jehoshaphat feared, set himself to seek the Lord. Proclaim a fast. And of course, they all prayed. Verse 14. And when they all prayed, see what the Bible says. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, the son of Asphat, came the Spirit of God in the midst of the congregation. And came, came the Spirit of God. I want to jump. Verse 15. The Spirit of God saying this. Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Why? Or dismayed. By the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the battle is mine. Watch this now. If I don't, this is what I'm saying. Once I do not pray out of when I'm fearful and shaking, once I can put my emotions together and cast my care, once I can pray out of faith, there will be a response from heaven. My God. Someone says, Why do we pray? Because prayer enforces prophecy. Not all prophecy comes by itself. Not all prophecy happens itself. So I'll say, how do you know that? Because Jesus, because God told Moses that two million people will leave Israel and enter into what? The promised land. How many people entered? Two. Why? Not all prophecies happen. Some prophecies must be fought for. Not all prophecy are auto happen. Some prophecies must be contended for. Not all prophecies happen just like that. You have to enforce certain kinds of victory in some prophecy. And how do you enforce it? By prayer. That's why Paul told Timothy, he said, make a good warfare according to the prophecies that have gone ahead of you. There are many of you in this place. There's a word of God about your business. There's a word of God about your husband. There's a word of God about your child. Many of you, you have not books full of words and words, prophetic word given to you, but it has not happened. And you're like, what are you doing? I'm just waiting on God. You don't wait on God. What do you do? You pray the prophecy into manifestation. What did God tell us this year? Is our year of what? Some, uh, <laughs> maybe you should go and get the CDs. Is our year of what? This year, we are focused and we're unstoppable. Question, have you prayed into existence? So I say, this year is so hard for me. But that's why God told you I'm unstoppable. That no matter how hard it is, you have a testimony. But when you receive the prophecy, what do you do the prophecy? Do you say, hey, hey, oh, oh, 
just hear the Lord, oh, I, I receive, I receive. But when you receive, did you read the story of Daniel? The Bible says Daniel understood by books that the 70 years that was spoken of captivity were already accomplished. That means Israel will be in captivity for 70 years. Already accomplished. But were they free? They were not free. They were doing extra time. Extra time. Why? Because there was not somebody that could enforce prophecy in prayer. Daniel said, he sought to seek the Lord. He sought to see the Lord. As he sought the Lord, deliverance came. Question. There are prophecies hanging over your head that unto you be. So I, 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 the, but the Lord said, I'll be married by 30. It's not like that. Though. You will push it in the spirits. So say, but, but God told me that my business will multiply this year. It's not like that. You will push it in the spirit. Because through prayer, through prayer, we enforce prophecy. We declare, Lord, you said this, so let it be. We declare, as it is done in heaven, let it be done on earth. You know why? The reason why Jesus Christ said, let it be done on earth as in heaven is this. What is done on heaven doesn't be done on earth. So through prayer, we enforce heaven's will on earth. There are certain words over your life. There are certain words over your business. There are certain words over your finance. And those words have not happened because you have been sitting idle. But during these 21 days of fasting and prayer, we went for something. Who what? We went for something. Let's stand up and pray. Let me tell you something. If you're overwhelmed, the first thing you do is, Lord, I'm sorry. I cast my cares on you. Because sometimes that's the best prayer I can pray. But some of you, how many of you have prophecies over your life? God spoke to you about something. How many of you have it? If you have, probably just wave. If you don't have, don't wave. If you have, wave. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, have, you will look for one neighbor, please agree. This is the prophecy. Let it find expression. Some of you are carrying prophecies from 2018. From 2017. It's time for prophecy to manifest. Let's go ahead and pray everybody. Let's go ahead and then first prophecy. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, this 21 days of fasting and prayer. Power, sir. I believe it shall be as it was spoken to me. In Jesus' name we pray. In this season, you will see prophetic what happened in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare on everyone in this service supernatural speed and acceleration. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.